the Old Testament is full of the prophecy that the Messiah is coming. And yet, 400 years before Jesus came, we have the book of Malachi, where the Lord lodges his complaint against the priests and the people. The priests, because they are not speaking the words of God, they are not warning the people, they are not leading the people. They are offering corrupt sacrifices. In chapter 2 of Malachi, the Lord is distressed because of the breakdown of marriage, the institution he loves. But people are being treacherous. They are undermining marriage. He designed marriage so that the parents could teach the children godliness. And so Satan attacks marriage by, by having believers marry unbelievers so that the children are not taught the ways of the Lord and by promoting unfaithfulness in marriage and easy divorce. At the end of Malachi chapter 2, he says, You have wearied the Lord with your words. Yet you say, In what way have we wearied him? In that you say, Everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them. Or, Where is the God of justice? So, in our society today, as we draw near to the days when the Lord Jesus shall return, we have the same thing happening. God's people not speaking out for the righteousness of God. Marriage under serious attack, both by redefining it, by promoting promiscuity and sex outside of marriage, by promoting divorce, by not supporting people in their marriage, this institution that God loves is under serious attack to the detriment of society at large. And the role of parents in raising children seriously undermined with the early childhood care procedures to take infants away from their parents on top of an education system which largely denies the Lord God. And then we have the absolute confusion where people call evil good and good evil and deny the very presence of God, deny that they are answerable to God. And so we continue reading in chapter 3. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord, as in the days of old, as in former years. And I will come near you for judgment, and I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans and against those who turn away an alien, because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I do not change, therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances, and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, In what way shall we return? My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we continue to share God's final words to Israel before 400 silent years. We've read Malachi chapter 3 verses 1 to 7. The book is basically written for those who will seek the Lord in this period of time in a society which is turned away from God. So those who are seeking God and want to know God, are promised, return to me, and I will return to you. They are 
to hope and expect his coming. For the Lord is faithful and will do the things that he has said. And the first thing he says in this chapter is, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. There's two people referred to here, my messenger and the Lord, the messenger of the covenant. The New Testament identifies my messenger as John the Baptist, who declared he is the voice of one who came to prepare the way for the Lord, calling people to repent because the Messiah was coming, the kingdom of heaven was at hand. And many people did repent, but the authorities didn't. John pointed his disciples to Jesus. Follow him. And so the Lord Jesus came, announced by John the Baptist, and he went around teaching the people, so he drew together his disciples. Malachi uses the phrase, the messenger of the covenant. Jeremiah had promised a new covenant. And Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, announced the new covenant to his disciples. The basis of the old covenant was sacrifices of animals. The basis of the new covenant is the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And then, the scripture here says, he will suddenly come to his temple. At his birth, he was brought to the temple unannounced. And Simeon and Anna were waiting for him and welcomed him there. Later he came as a 12-year-old boy, unannounced, and amazed the teachers. Then, at the age 30, he came in his public ministry, John too records, with a whip of cords to drive out the money changers at their tables in preparation for the Passover. And he did the same thing again in the week before he was crucified, saying, My father's house is called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. In saying he will suddenly come to the temple, the Jewish authorities did not know where he had come from. They argued, we do not know where this man comes from. They were not expecting him. They were caught off guard and they rejected him. But the declaration is, he is coming. And the New Testament concludes with a repetition of this statement. For he came, he went, and he is coming again. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and as a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. When the Lord Jesus came, he brought judgment on those who did not repent. He came as a saviour, but they rejected him, and so were not saved. The Romans came and destroyed them instead. The Old Testament doesn't clearly show the separation between the first and second coming. It was a secret, Paul tells us that was revealed after Jesus rose from the dead. But it is hinted at. Paul calls it the day of grace, the period of time when the message of the gospel goes to the Gentiles. But it is there in the repeated phrase from chapter 1. My name shall be great among the Gentiles. In every place incense shall be offered to my name, and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. My name is to be feared among the nations. In contrast to Jerusalem, which would be judged because they did not know their God. And so Israel has been judged and exiled from the land since AD 70, 40 years after the crucifixion of Jesus, till 70 years ago they were permitted to come back to the land in preparation for the Lord Jesus to return 